Cat and Chaps and welcome back to another fantastic episode where we're back on the EJ. You might actually have noticed that it's actually looking a lot better. It's slightly higher. I'm doing the hover conversion right now. I've got the Doc Brown book on hover conversions. It's going rather well. <laughs> Not really. I'm about to actually fit a floor pad. So I'll catch up on what's been now going on. Alrighty chums and chumaroonies, you will notice that the EJ is looking a lot better. Now, throughout the week, Dad has been diligently working on cleaning up the junk, etc. And then we got to a point where we realised, hang on, we're already a bit of Gravitex and a bit of satin black away from being done. So, I think a couple of nights after work, we just finished it, basically. <laughs> Um, and obviously we bolted the front back in yesterday afternoon as well um, with some new rubbers and the ones that were lovelyly donated they were these ones that go in under here um, but we had to obviously get the other ones to replace the tops so they're all done um, I seam sealed in and around those crevices and now I stone guarded under here because well one it actually looks pretty good <laughs> um, but two I sort of I wanted to protect it a little bit like I know I went to the, all the effort to take the stone guard off but the other stuff was really thick and had been there for like 50 years and it had dirt in it and stuff and the other stuff wasn't um, paintable like you know you could paint it but this stuff is designed to be painted over so and it does take some of the tinniness out of it so if you're going down the dirt road or something which you would never in this car and you get a stone chip or something it's not going to it's going to have a bit of protection before it starts rusting plus it actually looks really good apparently i've picked up a few dents over the years i didn't notice but i ran some seam seal through here down here and gravitex it all I d you know there is trash in it but i mean when you're painting in not a spray booth and you're painting uh, black of all colors you're gonna get trash in it and it's ironic it's actually only in the flats of all of it whereas the firewall there's not a drop of trash in it i'm like typical so you know because it's a sort of vertical surface dirt can't really land in it it sort of doesn't happen but it lands in here but I've gone for just a generic satin black I was like two pack satin black so this is pretty hardy stuff um, I sort of went uh, yeah I wanted the original color but considering that Holden when they were doing these they used to just dump all the paint into a pot and spray them with whatever's left over at the end of the day there's so many variations on engine bay color it's not even funny um, they were a lot of them were a sort of dark bluey gray color but I've just gone generic satin black if I have any issues in the future I can color match it pretty easily um, and it doesn't look terrible it actually turned out alright and I've gravitexed sort of below that seam there um, so that everything down there and the bottom of the legs are done and you know not perfect but it it'll do <laughs> um i'm actually relatively happy it's only been four weeks worth of work five weeks i think and i think doing the maths on this to do the whole front end strip it wire wheel it um you know chisel off all the stuff and um a bit of welding and stuff i think it's only cost like 150 bucks um because those wire brush packs are only like ten dollars and I think I only used two or three packets of them, so there's 30 bucks. And I think Gravitex and a bit of paint and a couple of paint pots and a few things, that was like $70. And then a little bit of, you know, that rattle can paint. Yeah, it's not. And a bit of paint strippy. So we're not talking. It hasn't been. Less than $200 definitely has fixed all of the front end. Oh, not counting the $100 rubber kit that I had to buy to get those other rubbers. But, you know to actually paint it you could technically put the old rubbers back in so um, to do the painting and clean it up it actually was pretty cheap um, whereas if you had to send it off to be sandblasted it would be you know thousands of dollars and blah 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 blah, and you've dirt everywhere so I think I've done a pretty good budget job um, plus I had to fix all the rust in the front so we've done that rust that broken bolt that rust 
battery tray out straightened that rust um, you know any other issues that were going on um, and obviously we've got oh yeah that comes in the kit too so that's the front the outrigger rubber too so engine mounts the handbrake doodad they still need to be painted but I was able to take them out and sandblast them in the front sway bar links as well so it's all all going rather well and today's task is the floor pan so one thing you got to watch for this when these are doing these the fuel line is right under here it literally runs just below that piece of floor so be careful when you're chopping it out damn compressor cutting me off mid-sentence um, I was gonna say starting with right so we've got these floor pans from rare spares now they cover their own tush by putting that sticker on them basically admitting that they're not perfect they're only an aid to help you and I'll admit while they're not perfect they're a pretty good head start and floor pans are fairly cheap because I mean it's only a stamped piece of flat steel really anything that bugs me is this lip here is folded the wrong way on the factory car the lip actually goes down but I know why they put it at the top so that the at home guy can do it so this is going to be hopefully helpful information now I haven't done a floor pan for a long time so I'm going to wing it at the same time as everybody else um, so looking at your floor pan there's two things you're going to well three things under there on this side the hook that the handbrake cable hooks onto to pull tension on the cable to pull it away from the exhaust and the tail shaft is just there there is a seat belt bolt here even though they're not used on EJ's you can actually see the factory plug plug in the hole um, in there so you've got to re-weld that back to the new floor pan and when you're cutting the fuel line is just below there on the driver's side so watch out that and your wiring I'm gonna have to tuck that well out of the way because um, one of the painful things is the hood lining wiring runs up down around here down and down here and it's a pain in the proverbial to get it out so it's going to stay um, so first port of call is I'm going to drop the floor pan into the hole and just spray a bright color around it and then I'm going to use that as my do not cut pass line and whittle out the majority of the floor with an oxy set you yourself could probably use an angle grinder I personally hate them with a the passion of the Christ um, so I'm going to use an oxy torch because I have the technology um, and then we'll work on getting it sitting in there now do be mindful that right here is the very end of the rear, well the front half of the leaf spring mount so right here um, welded to the floor is just a big beefy piece of steel that sits right there so watch for your fuel line you've got to put that back on and that back on once you're done but the majority of it can go to the bin so I'll catch up in a second alrighty the floor is out I did have to resort to the angle grinder because that coating that's on the bottom of it just kept catching on fire and toxic like making toxic smoke and nearly wiped me out I was like well going back to the angle grinder so I have since whittled out the floor uh, I pulled the fuel line away from the car so that's not a problem undid the spring see how it's got a, a spring hanging off to full tension on the thing there it is there got to weld that little guy back on the other floor and that so I'll get those off in a minute and put them on the new floor pan um, now when it comes to doing floor pans I have noticed uh, a few states and territories particularly Australia I believe Melbourne is one of them they actually require you for roadworthiness that the floor pan you put in is overlapped um, so you're probably going to want to do your own research because if you were to just you know just zip weld it in um, you know butt join it and they see that they may not like it so probably best you double check your own states and territories for 
roadworthiness as far as putting floor pans in because they may reject you if you don't do it properly. I'm pretty sure in Victoria it's uh, 25 mil overlap. So this floor pan overlaps the factory floor pan by 25 mil, and there's, uh, I believe, stitch welds all the way around. Um, but don't quote me on it. I know they're all different. I know I could not find anything on South Australia, but considering our cars here yeah, don't really have roadworthies, <laughs> I don't think it matters. Um, a car in South Australia, once it's registered, it never gets looked at ever again. Um, Sucks to be all the other states where their cars get checked every time they have rego. Not South Australia, and I believe not Queensland either. So, useless trivia. So, what I've done is, you know, copper spread around the edges so I could see how far it is. Whittled it out. Um, so, now I'm going to sit it back in. I've also taken off the little lip that was on here. Cleaned off that. See, that? that's what I was talking about before, how that was poking out. And I'll just... I'm not going to bore you with the backwards and forwards thing of it because it really is mind numbing um, basically I'm just going to sit it in there until I'm happy and then I'm going to run my you know I'll probably maybe even put some tech screws in to hold it in the right spot if you had Clecos those little things to lock them in probably not a bad idea either and then I'm going to run the blade um, whoops where's my hand run the blade around the edges and just cut through weld cut through weld cut through weld cut through like I do on all the other stuff and that way I get a perfect sort of butt join and then this sort of effectively lip that is overlapped for now will fall through here on the inside but I've chopped it off here because it doesn't matter so and I don't think there's any welds through here so when I cut through I'll probably cut through right to this edge because there's a few pinholes here I'd like to get rid of um, go around the edge of that. As I cut through I can just pull this out and flick it away if that makes sense. Um, so, hold your ears. Now I have found um, once when I was doing one of these cars uh, umpteen years ago that the rear space floor pans were not actually big enough. They weren't they didn't go far enough. I have noticed that these over the years have actually crept a little bit bigger, but I sometimes think they're not quite big enough. Um, but it fits fairly okay. I'm a bit annoyed that this lip pokes up when it should poke down, but I guess it's meant for the at-home handyman type guy. So I might whittle the floor pan off a little bit through here. Uh, just so it sits a bit nicer because it's not quite sitting there. It needs to basically fall back a little bit. Which it doesn't want to do because there's too much metal there. So I'll just shim that off. Get it till it lines up in the grooves. And then I can just cut through and pull the junk through from the underside. Um, that's pretty much the gist of it really. It's not overly exciting. Um, but I thought I'd run you through it in case... You have to, but if you were actually in, say, Victoria or that, and your rules required you to overlap, this is about when you drop your floor pan, treat it, and then start welding it in, um, because you're allowed to have, you're supposed to have a bit of overlap. So basically, cut your junk out, drop it in, zip around it with the welder, done. Um, but I'm going to make it a little bit better. So I'll catch up once I've sort of got it sitting in its groove properly. Alrighty chaps, now if your state or territory requires you to overlap, this is where you'd be giggling like a schoolgirl because it is prepped for an overlap right now. Um, but I am not going to because I'm going to slice through and drop through the overlap. That's just me. I mean I could, if I wanted to get it done in a timely fashion, I would just zip around that with a weld, be done with it, uh, and then seam seal the living snot out of it from underneath. But I have removed the seat belt mount from the other floor pan and cleaned it up, drilled a hole and spot welded it to this floor pan exactly how it was from the factory because I have the technology and the handbrake um, spring retainer clip doodad hoo-ha with the what's it. So I am now at the stage where um, I can start welding it in. What I might do is considering this area doesn't really need much I might tack it in here push it down as hard as I can tack it in along here because well I'm not cutting anything out it's just how it is and then that can actually hold the floor pan in its 
in a position where it's not going to walk around and then I can pick a spot and just work my way around and then pull off the, the garbage from the underside. Um, now I'd love to film it but it is so ridiculously awkward to actually there's no real spot in this car that put a tripod in. If I could put a tripod outside the car, I'd be so far away from it, it wouldn't make any sense. So unfortunately, um, you're going to miss out on the welding stage. But literally, at this point in time, I'm going to tack it in through here. Hold, push it down, tack it in. Because these are a little bit out of shape, so you've got to push them down with a bit of force. Tack it in along here. Because, you know. Yeah. And then I'm going to run a blade along. Peel it down, tack, tack, and work my way around. So I thought I'd show a bit of a part way through type dealio. Um, so I actually welded the um, front suspension mount to the floor pan uh, because it actually helps hold the pan down. Uh, got these uh, side in and I've cut with the grinder through Obviously, I'm tacking, cutting, cut, tacking, cut, okay. And then if you go under, meow. <coughs> whoop, hello. <laughs> that is actually a sliver of the floor pan. So if we get real close, you'll notice that it's going to be a nice little butt join. And then obviously, I'm just weld that little guy up. But that's the gist of it with this one. I mean, ultimately, when it's sitting in, you could just weld around it. You know, leave a 25mm overlap for the ones that require that. Um, or if you do it this way, and you can make it look super Mickey Mouse, that from the underneath an inspector wouldn't know, then you can probably do it this way as well. But uh, I think I know the reason why they... I think they go for... Sounds really bad, but the idiot factor for the overlap requirement because it's really really hard to screw it up um, and they know that if it's overlapped and sitting in it's going to be solid whereas this you do it this way and if you're not a very good welder and you grind it too much and etc etc you could potentially have the floor pan fall through you know what I mean it's sort of I think they do it for the idiot factor um, but and of course the at home guy probably will go the shorter route but this is my car and my floor pan so I'm doing it this way and I will say the rear spares floor pans although not perfect um, okay well let me rephrase that the EJEH floor pans for these are far better than the ones for the Falcons there we go that's what I was trying to say I don't know whether or not the person putting the making the floor pans for the Holdens is better than the guy making the ones for the Fords, but the Falcon ones do not fit as well as this. Um, or I managed to get one floor pan that is pretty good, either or, but it does fit and the lines line up fairly well. So I must say that this one is pretty good. So, all in all, rear spares floor pans, not perfect, but far better than trying to hand make that stuff um, especially considering on the underside of the car it's going to have seam sealer and body deadener and at the top it's going to have underlay and carpet and you'll never ever see it anyway so yeah so that's why and the other reason these things always rust out is the factory have vinyl floors and the vinyl floors are fantastic at trapping moisture the underside of this car because of that coating has still got paint on it like the blue paint is still on the bottom of the car so this car has literally rusted the floors out from the inside out and I think they all do that so um, enough chit chat I'm gonna just keep cutting and keep tacking I'll catch you up in a second alrighty I thought I'd have a sort of <laughs> part way through welding break to uh, yeah not lean over the sill panel much anymore because my chest is hurting um, but I thought I'd add in these um, you can see the remnants I'll go over here there I don't know if you can see it and there was one here it's supposed to be one here there's another one the remnants here and here they actually hold the wiring sort of 
against the sil inner sill panel and out of the way and I realised that I hadn't put those back on. One being they look like the ones up the front and back but I thought I'd put them back in. If I'm going to the effort to put the floor pan in I might as well add in the two little tabs to hold the wiring in. They just basically tuck it there and then your carpet and stuff will go over it and you won't even see it. But I thought I'd add them back in while I'm here. Uh, I don't know if I got them right and ultimately down the track if they don't work right well I can cut them back off um, but I'm pretty sure that's where they go one there one I know one went there and you can see one there so they seem to be fairly evenly spaced I know there's none through here um, but that's yeah just to hold your wiring in but so far everything's going rather lovely um, it's a bit thin here so um, right there blew through a little bit but it is what it is. The floor pan isn't any bigger, so I can't make it any bigger. I didn't actually... I didn't cut that floor pan. All I did was trim off a little bit of that in there. I haven't actually made the floor pan any smaller. I've used almost every ounce of it. <sighs> but we're getting there. i just got to go... I'm doing it sort of there, 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 there. You know, staggering it around. And then I'll have to reach in real far and do that one but yeah that one's all done through to the back there around there them tabs are in across here up to here so we're making good progress and once i've done i'll show you the end result alrighty chaps and chaparoonies the floor pan is in it's welded looking lovely i am yeah i mean here at this point in time you could grind the wheels down i am not going to because why? <laughs> um, I don't, you don't see it, it doesn't matter, plus it adds strength, so I'm not even going to bother grinding them down because it's just a waste of time and uh, consumables. I've wiped some rust converter around it um, to get all the edges that had pitting in them and make them all turn black and seal it up and then I'm going to etch prime and then I'm going to do a brush, a seam sealer around the edges and then uh, later in the week when I have some more of this stuff I will coat the whole floor in that and probably up and around over there and it should look lovely um, I don't know how good this video is going to be but you know there's another piece of the EJ done um, I also thought I'd show off because I totally forgot to do it earlier but if we go over now oops wrapping out the video I did actually end up finishing the two dents that were in the tailgate of the Commodore. There was one here-ish, I can't even tell where it was, and there was one that went straight up from this dent. I've got to fix this still, but for a rank amateur, I don't think that turned out too shabby at all. And it's looking lovely. And as you can tell, every Saturday I drive the XB. Um, even though currently, ah, oh, one last thing, I had some more bit sandblast for the EJ. The boot lid, the nose cone, and the two rear doors. Unfortunately the nose cone come back from blasting with a dent, which I'm absolutely certain it didn't have before, and some rust in the corners, which is a little bit of a bummer, but yeah, it's not here nor there, and I've been slowly but surely taking all the old tape off the uh, wiring loom and re-taping it with new electrical tape and I've still got to fix up the ends but I thought you know to go from that scungy stuff to something that's a little bit nicer probably not too bad but yes the uh, only the bonnet is to go to be sandblasted and then all the panels will be done. I've got some door skins, one door skin. Yeah, and I've got to repair the frames too. They came back bla uh, uh, rustier after being blasted. So when we do the skins, we'll do some repairs to them. So currently I have the four doors blasted, nose cone and boot lid. I've got to get the um, bonnet blasted and that'll wrap it up nicely. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that episode don't know how exciting it's going to be or how helpful it will be but there's a rare spares floor fan fitted and I'd have to say fits pretty good 
Holden ones at this point in time seem to be a bit better than the Ford ones. Um, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, chaps, and I'll see you on the next one.